we will definitely not shut up and dribble. The champ is here. I must be the greatest. The champ is here. I'm going to continue to stand with the people. The champ is here. I will, I will not, not lose. lose. I'm a bad man. Yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you are here with we. My name is EJ, and I got my man, MH. He is the DB of the show, and we are Black in Sports, giving a voice to the culture that won't shut up and dribble here, interviewing the best professionals in the game and in the boardroom. So we're covering it all, laughing at it all, and providing a platform to be heard. So you know what we do about this time, and we get right into it. We got to welcome our guests, because once we welcome our guests, it's on, right? So uh, today, man, we brought we brought a Southern gentleman you know, he's always front and center. Yes, pun is intended. Front and center as a lineman in the, uh, in the NFL. We'll get into that. But now he's the director of football affairs for the Los Angeles Rams. Please clap it up for Jock McClendon. Please, please clap it up, clap it up, clap it up. Appreciate the intro, fellas. Glad <laughs> to be with y'all today, man. Oh, man, Looking glad to have you here, man. <laughs> let's go, let's go. So how we start the show is we always start the show with the shoot your shot moment, all right? So we really ask for like a short story or just the time you shot your shot, right? And we can't go, you know, people attempt to skate off and like, oh, man, I shoot my shot every day. That's good. But we want a specific story for the people. Go, hit us with that. Oh, man, shooting your shot. I think what's uh, been dynamic about my opportunity is that uh, being able to leverage being a player and being in some uh, different, um, you know, rooms that you might not otherwise been if you were in other situations. So I think I remember when I was one of the Miami Dolphins, um, I had an opportunity to go to lunch uh, with the team president, who's still the team president today, Tom Garfinkel. Um, And I just walked up to him cold and I was like, hey, you know, I think that, you know, definitely are in the latter years of my career and really want to kind of hear about how you navigated that space, how you got to where you got, what did you do to do to, do to get there? And uh, man, we met we met at a little restaurant um, during a lunch break on an off day while I was still playing. And, you know, I was always curious to see what it looked like to work on that other side. And I think that a lot of brothers miss the opportunity while you have the leverage of being in that building and in that seat to have conversations with the people that who can actually get you to the next spot. Um, and it's it's funny we ran into each other. We still you know keep somewhat in contact today. And you know it's uh, I remember that moment. Is like that's what you have to do. You have to make yourself vulnerable and be willing to have that uncomfortable conversation. So so that was about probably about year six of my NFL career. I shot my shot. Let's go. Love it. The stories about off days, man. I I, I think I think players could probably have days of stories about what accomplished on off days. Uh, the, the the man of the year, most recent man of the year, Andre. Andrew, Andrew Whitworth has a lot of stories about his Tuesday off days and what inspiration was. So shout out to you for that. But where did your love for sports start? Man, you know what? I, I would have call a free lunch kid, right? You know, you, you sign up, you do your little form and you get a free lunch. You know, you get breakfast and lunch. You know, I thought it was a discount, but didn't know really mine was broke. <laughs> uh, so, you know, that's, what, that's how we were living growing up. But I think it provided me a unique opportunity to be kind of that adopted kid in the neighborhood. You know, we lived in a small town, Cleveland, Tennessee, played all the sports, tried to play baseball. I was trash, but I still played, um, but really uh, worked basketball and then finally took up football, probably about middle school. And, uh, you know, I think what sports provided me is an outlet to kind of get away from, from being broke. Right. Like <laughs> was that, those, those, those moments to where you could finally concentrate on something that kind of distract you. Uh, from some of the circumstances you may have been involved with at the time. And it was a, a vehicle for me to to make friends and uh, have opportunities to travel that I might mother, otherwise not have had. So, you know, sports provided me and it's given me so much. This game of football has given me so much. I won't be able to pay it back ever. Oh, I love that, man. So you mentioned Cleveland, Tennessee. Tell me what it's like growing up in Cleveland, Tennessee, man. So, you know, I'm a Bradley County kid. It's a good spot. We got about, you know, it's it's a sprawling metro of about, I think, about 45,000. Sprawling. <laughs> sprawling metro of about 45,000 now. But you know what? I, I would say this. right? It's a quaint, small town, country. You know, the best place to eat in town is Cracker Barrel. Um, you know, we can get your gravy and biscuit yeah. and all that good stuff. <laughs> um, go. You know what? I would say that it was cool being in a place where you knew a lot of people. Because I would say, once again, being somebody who was that quote unquote free lunch kid, there was a lot of people that took care of you. And I think that without a small community like that, that was pretty affluent, to be honest. You know, I've 
all my friends had their mom and dad. They were pretty much middle class. And so, you know, I was that low, low income broke family. But, you know, you know, rising tides lift all boats and Cleveland, Tennessee was the tide for me. So, you know, it was a unique town to grow up in, especially uh, being being black uh, in, a, in a mostly white affluent community. But I would say that uh, I'm thankful for the opportunity to grow up there. And, uh, you know, it's definitely somewhere I visit every summer. My mom still lives there. My wife's family still lives there. So it's near and dear to my heart. That's awesome. Takes a village, right? No Takes question about it. So Gatorade Player of the Year, uh, interested in the journey to, to the offensive line. So where did that start? Was that always the position right away, def offensive, defensive line, or was there some, some other routes to it? Yeah, mo I would say 75% of O-linemen would definitely tell you they did not want to end up <laughs> right, right, right. blocking on that line <laughs> uh, where they don't talk about you. Uh, it's grunt work. You know, you're doing good when they don't talk about you. And right. You're doing bad when they do talk about you, right? So the answer is absolutely not that I think I was going to uh, have a trajectory as an offensive lineman. So growing up, um, you know, I only played really D-line. Actually, in, in my last year of high school, I played both ways. I was playing uh, D-line and I was playing like fullback tight end, going in motion, blocking people. There it is. I was uh, waiting for that fullback. You know, so, That's what. <laughs> you know, hey, hey, I, I didn't get the ball much, but, you know, I could definitely clear a hole. <laughs> um, you know, I think it was a unique opportunity, right, to like really uh, be um, used in a as kind of a Swiss Army knife type of way. So, you know, it was a fun thing. And I think that, you know, at the end of the day, I was I was quick. I was athletic, but I was pretty stiff. So pretty much every college that recruited me and I had the opportunity to have a dynamic recruiting journey. You know, I had a, a couple of good offers, but there was only about two schools that recruited me as a D lineman and uh you know, Coach Philip Fulmer, who's still uh, near and dear to my heart, and we still talk to this day, he kept it a buck with me. He goes, you know, you can go play in college on that D-line, be all right, maybe be back up. He said, you come to this whole line, you can come make some money. And so, you know what, I appreciated the honesty, even though I didn't want to hear it. And he's right. still somebody to this day that, uh, you know, sometimes you don't want to hear stuff, but he's going to keep it a buck with you. So, you know, I, I tell people, like, when you go through that process of recruiting, you're in all these dynamic relationships, and you don't know how they're going to form years later, like, this this guy still texts me to this day right. like I was one of his recruits. He treats me like family. And like when you make that college choice of going somewhere like that, it's uh it's very unique to still be able to have that kind of relationship. That's so. awesome, man. So uh, you talk a lot about family, man. And I know uh just kind of when we, you know, prep for this. And so one of the things that had to be tough for you is uh you you didn't spend high school time around family, man. You uh you went to um Baylor. For, yeah. for high school, which is away from family. So tell us about that experience and how did how did that decision come? You know what? So I was a uh, boarding student and um, I had an opportunity to go to this private school is highly affluent um, with uh, the other side of the world, as, as you call it. You know, you walk up and you got 16 year olds with BMWs, you got, you know, country club families. And here I am once again, the free lunch kid who's on Scully. Uh, and, you know, you, you kind of have that what well, I guess the best way to put it is imposter syndrome, right? You feel like you don't belong. And uh, you kind of feel like a, a square peg in a round hole. But um, it was a unique opportunity for me. You know, I think that uh, growing up with just me and my mother, um, I saw it as an opportunity to uh, be less of a burden for her. Um, you know, here I can go and, and take some financial burden off of her plate and uh, have an opportunity to hopefully fly one day uh, when it's my turn to, to leave the nest. So, you know, I kind of I kind of thought a little big picture at, uh, you know, 13, 14 years old that, you know, you take this opportunity and it can lead to uh, greener pastures. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm very thankful for that time in my life because I think that you kind of got to kind of got to see how the other side lives. So, you know, hopefully as I continue to, you know, grow wiser and older and, uh, you know, have lived experiences, you can lean on those times and say, OK, that was kind of that inflection point to see that you wanted more for yourself. And that you saw that, you know, sometimes you got to make decisions that are uncomfortable and uh, way out of the way to, uh, to to find that success. So finding success and making decisions. University of Tennessee. Some call it the real UT. That's a little debatable. I, I'm not I'm not sure about that. But <laughs> what made that <laughs> what made that the choice for you? What made it, what made that home for you? Man, you know what? In, in all honesty, uh, it was a unique dynamic recruiting experience for me. Uh, you know, I, I, for me, it probably came down to Tennessee, Alabama, Auburn, and Florida. 
You know, I'm I mean, gonna say not, this, uh, you know what they say. I, the SEC had choices though, right? It, it, it just, just, it yeah. just means more. Uh, <laughs> and the SEC is so called as they say. And I think that you know, you go to all these different institutions, you see their game day, and like these these rabid fan bases. Like, there's really nothing like it. Um, you go on college game day, it's so. Um, the pageantry, the the camaraderie, everybody coming back who have passed alumni. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm an East Tennessee kid. I grew up an hour south of the university. Uh, you know, uh, people ask me to who are the most popular people in Tennessee growing up. I'm gonna go Dolly Parton, Pat Summit, and Philip Fulmer. Um, you maybe you can throw Elvis in there as well. But like, you know, you got this opportunity to be like to go play for a, a you know a, a Hall of Famer. The guy, like everybody, I, I remember when he came and visited me in high school, he came in and uh, watched me lift. And then uh, he came, he came to lunch and it was like, it was like the president walked in, right? Like that's the kind of aura that he has in that, in that side of the country. And he's well-deserving because of what he did during his time there. And so honestly, like the, the, what, what do they say you know, when you're in recruiting? The number one rule is to find the decision maker. Uh, Coach Former got tight with my mom and it was a wrap. I was going nowhere. <laughs> so you know, I, it was, it, I don't regret it at all. You know, you got to represent the home state. You got to be around people, you know, um, and still to this day, right? Like the, uh, the family atmosphere and, and all that and the ex teammates is, uh, it's, it's, it's awesome. So, you know, East Tennessee kid, like it was going to be hard for me to lead a crib. There you go. So started as a freshman, man, like to, to, to come on or like, or were you redshirted or did you start as a true freshman? So, like, I was a true was freshman. Cool. And, you know, I, I honestly, it would have been better had I redshirted because I was transitioning from the D-line to O-line. Um, and that was a hard transition for my life because, like, it's something that you truly hadn't, like, you know, you got to reposition your mind from going forward to how do you go backwards control, right? And so especially in pass protection and stuff like that. So it took a little time for me to adjust. But I think once I got my footing, you know, the university was patient with me. A coach former being a former old lineman, right? Like that was somebody you can lean on and just really having some dynamic people in our room, right? Like you had Ramon Foster who had an unbelievable career, career for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, I mean, that was big bro. Dude's incredible. Had an incredible career. Um, you had Anthony Parker. You had Chris Scott. You had Aaron Sears. You know, you just kind of had a lot of guys to, uh, to look up to. And so, you know, it was a unique opportunity to be in such a talented room and just really – um, be able to sit back and watch how these people went about their business and, you know, be on my journey, but also, you know, really being visual with their journey to see how they were handling their business as well. So we get through college, uh, we get to the end and uh, draft day comes fourth round Indianapolis coast. So kind of tell us your draft day experiences uh, and, and what that feeling was like, you know, after hearing your name called by that, that organization, man, you know what? I tell people all the time, right? Like, you know, you're a kid and, and the NFL has done such an unbelievable job of making this, the NFL draft, like this just a uh, tent pole event where yeah. you know the dream comes to life. And <laughs> right. so as you, if you're a kid who's 10, 12, 14 years old and you're watching this on TV, it's like this huge thing. And it's like, almost like a coming of age for someone, right? That's this opportunity to go from, you know, for me, right. From, from broke to hopefully a trajectory of, uh, you know, to greener pastures as we, as we spoke about earlier. And so I remember um, I had no clue I was going to get drafted. I thought I'd been on draft free agent, just to be completely mm -hmm. honest. Um, had a pretty good pro day. And after pro day, had gotten a bunch of calls. And so the, the steam had picked up a little bit. It was a non-combine guy, right? And I remember getting a call uh, from a particular team that morning. They said, hey, uh, it was day three or whatever. Um, hey, we're, if, if you're there in the fifth, you're going to take us. We're going to take you. And I'm like, you sure you got the right number? And I'm like, yeah, we're going to take you. All right. I said, man, that, that's awesome. Look forward to it. So obviously I told not a soul because the last thing I want to do is tell everybody. And then my butt don't even get the, the, the slip don't even come through nor where I get drafted. So uh kept it to myself. And, uh, man, we got to the end of the fourth round. Um, and it's pick 129. And, um, you know, I get a call from the Indianapolis Colts. You know, we're about to take you with this pick. And I just remember being in the room with family members, my mother, uh, my girlfriend at the time was now my wife. And, you know, you got to share that moment with the people you care about the most. And, you know, that's that's the dream, right? It's like you you experience that dream moment with people you truly care about, true, true people who have been through the the mud with you, as, as, as we call it, right? And um, 
it was a unique moment and I was thankful for that point in time. It was um it was it was transformational, obviously, as I sit here today in front of y'all. Did you interview and, and work out with the Colts? Um, or how did that 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 work? So actually I had like three uh we call them top thirty visits. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and one of them was to, to Indianapolis and it was weird. Like I, I didn't know how to dress and it was like my first one. So I was like, you know what? And I'm, once again, we were talking about shooting a shot earlier. You know, I went, I went suited and booted with a full <laughs> tie with, with the Oxford loafers. Let's go. And, you know, I mean, you know, Hey, it's, 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 it's a, it's a business interview, right? It's so an interview. Yeah. Um, it was a unique experience as I get there and it was kind of like, they didn't have a bunch of my medical from the combine. Right. So it kind of was kind of like a medical check for me. To make sure but i did have some unique interviews with some of the scouting assistants during that time but it was a it i didn't speak to any coaches i didn't speak to the gm it was kind of like a low-key in and out so i was like oh yeah they just getting me ready in case i'm undrafted you know they got all the got all the stuff and you know sure enough they really had done enough deep diving on me i mean being in the process now um yeah. you know working with our gm and seeing how much deep dive <laughs> done on the back end that these players have no clue about I was like, all right, man, they already had, they, they knew everything about them. They could tell you, they could tell you what hospital I was born in by that point. Um, so, you know, knowing what I know now, I was like, oh, the, the hay was the hay was in the barn. Now, I, I don't know if they knew they're going to make the pick, but they knew all they needed to know about Jacques McClendon. They didn't have to interview and find out anything else. <laughs> they, they they picking your bag up at back and saying, yo, that's you. That's you. That's you. No, no, no. We saw it coming. No, we saw that. No <laughs> man, so we'll probably toggle back and forth, maybe, you know, because we're uh we just want to talk about this section we call like in your career, in the game. We call it in the game, in the career, whatever. And so knowing that, that let's jump into your role. Like, is um, I guess first give us a kind of overview of what your role is, right? Because I think that's one of the things that and, and, you know, me and MH were just talking about people we know in different um, kind of aspects of that through the different teams. Each team set up for kind of what you do is a little different, right? Like where you're housed and maybe what your responsibilities are. So kind of tell us what that looks like with you at the Rams. You know what? I'm in a very unique opportunity. And I'm so thankful for my leadership with my GM, head coach, my president. Um, I've gotten a lot of autonomy and um, opportunity. Um, to be in some some high level points, high level aspects of the organization. So, you know, I'm helping out with the draft. I'm helping out as a liaison from the football ops department to the business side. I'm working on some of the big marketing projects that we may, may have, and how does that integrate into our football schedule? I'm helping. You know, sometimes I help the head coaches with our head coach with football and football coach interviews and things on the football side as well. So, like, you know, I got a promotion probably about a year ago, and it was just a really dynamic opportunity for me to grow. Um, to do more. Uh, you know, I think that we all want the opportunity to grow, learn, but I will say that you only get that when you have the dynamic leadership that allows you to, those opportunities. And I can say as a, as a black male in sports that, um, you know, I'm, I've, I've been um, mentored, listened to, you know, and, and groomed um, for, for, for the, for some opportunities. So, you know, I'm thankful to be a Ram because I think, you know, you move your family all the way across the country. You don't have no clue what you're getting into. You hit, you've never worked with anybody in the building before. I, I could have never bet that this opportunity had would would have been what it has been to my career to this point. So uh, honestly, I, I get a, I get a lot of touch points and a lot of uh, you know what we call it having you know long tentacles across the entire organization. So um, it's they've really allowed me the opportunity to grow. And so kind of out of my old position, I've kind of grown um, out of and, and and have gotten some more um, executive touch points. So you started off in, in, in player engagement. Mm -hmm. um, and first of all, I want to say, you know, shout out to everything that you do in that world. I, I think people don't understand. Sometimes it could be a thankless role for uh, sure, because a lot of it is private. Right. And so uh, all the things that you do to help the players as as they're you know going through their career, sometimes, you know, that's just stuff that's not public. Right. So you, you, you might not get that. Thank you. Um, but ending in Jacksonville and then obviously starting that role with the the, the the Rams. How did that process work? And um, you know, why player engagement initially? You know what? I think um, you know, as I was talking about earlier, man, I've had some unique opportunities to be with some people that have really helped me in my life. Um, and I had no, I had, I didn't know anybody in this building. And you know, I had um, a bunch of people that thought highly of me that that made calls to this building when the opening came open and said, "Hey, this may be something that's good for you." So, you know, I came out here and interviewed with. Uh, Les Sean um, and was able to, uh, you know, get the job 
And, you know, for me, right, it was an opportunity as somebody who was a journeyman, right? Like, you know, I wasn't a guy that was a, a starter and, and made, you know, multi-million dollar contracts. I was a guy that always had to work work for my spot. And I was probably 50 to 53 uh, anytime I was on the team. And, you know, you had a grit grind and work to, uh, to stay on that job. So I think that that perspective probably at that point in time in that position gave me a unique um, vantage point of what it's like to be an NFL player. And so, you know, I kind of leveraged that, you know, not for um, not for anything other than to be able to tell my story and tell guys that, um, you know, this this thing that you're doing right now, this NFL thing that um, it's a it's a gift and you need to treat it as such because uh, the gift can be taken away quickly and you better be doing everything in your power to make sure you're staying within these walls because the opportunity to fly, the opportunity to, to uh, you know, be financially secure, the opportunity to leverage this to do whatever you want for whatever job, whatever whatever thing you want to do in life, you know, you need to make sure that you protect what you're doing right now, and that's football. So, you know, I was able to use you know, kind of my journey as a way to provide um, perspective uh, for the guys as they as they went on their journey. So, you know, was able to do some of that, and uh, at the end of the day, um, was able, to hopefully, have done a good job, and you know, was able to get a promotion to kind of. I still um, I have two people that uh, do that do that department now, um, and I'm I'm able to uh, do some other things. So it's been um, it's been quite the uh, opportunity to be in Los Angeles around for sure. Folks, with, with football, my fault, EJ, but with football affairs now as your current role, the business side and the football side could be completely different. And especially with the Rams, I, I think you guys are in kind of two different buildings, right? So as you're kind of that that point man in between. Um, how is that process for you, man? Like, you know, I, I know that's a lot, right? And sometimes the business football side doesn't understand the business side. The business side doesn't really understand what's going on football operations side, but we're all kind of trying to work together. So how's that for you? I would say this, man. Our team president, Kevin Demoff, is a, is a guy that has worked on both sides of the house. And so he understands what it means to integrate and everybody to be a Los Angeles Ram. So at the end of the day, we're all Rams. Uh, we all have different roles within the Rams. We all have different things we need to achieve to make sure we're moving the, moving the needle forward for the organization. But I think what makes the job, um, you know, aligned and symbiotic, right, is that your executive leaders and the executive leadership team um, have an opportunity to make sure that everybody's on the same page and everybody knows what the role is and what we want to amplify and to stay aligned. And if we're not aligned, let's have the tough conversation to get back in line. So, you know, just uh, to answer your question, it, it's awesome because it's all about relationships. It's all about understanding workflows. It's all about collaborating with other people. It's all about uh, being a part of something that's bigger than yourself. And, um, you know, that's what being a Ram is, you know, you know, coach, Coach McVay always says, we, not me. And uh, that, that culture's lived not only on the football side, it's lived on our business side as well. And we're all Los Angeles Rams. And I think that's what's unique here is that we strive for that. We work for that. Um, and, and, and it's a very much of an importance to the entire uh, collective. With the players now, um, and I mean, I, I think it's just kind of like a flow of it, right? Because, uh, and I'm all, kind of leading you with this question, but what are some of the things that you really attempt to impart in, you know, players, right? Because there is so much going for them. There's, this is temporary, which sometimes we do forget. So how do you um, attempt to impart that into the players? Uh, you know, that's a great question. I think that at the end of the day, like, it's different for everybody and that you can't treat it as a, as a catch-all. Uh, you have to, when you're, when you're in that position, you have to know that it's, uh, it's equity, not equality. And so you have to understand the different dynamics with, uh, with all the different humans. And, um, you know, they're all, uh, you know, what we, what we like to say here with the Rams, right? Like, you know, you got, you got two people, you got the player and the person. Um, you know, the, the, the more complete person is going to be the more optimally performing player. And so you have to get to know the person so you can get to the player. Um, you got to treat it like this, this culture, these um, these athletes today, myself included, who's a millennial, right? Like they're more empowered. They're more educated. They have more opportunity to be able to know, you know, what, what they can stand for, what, what they need to know. And I think that you have to uh, you know, meet them where they're at. Uh, they're not always meet them where you're at. And I think one of the most things you want to empower them is, you know, uh, one, what's your why, right? Like, you know, why do you do this? What do you want to do in the future? Like once you find your, your vision and values you, you can operate out of that. And also like, you know, as a player, what's going to be your rhythm? You know, that's, that's the one thing you see with our best players. They have a rhythm, uh, you know, whether it's, whether it's Matthew Stafford, whether it's Aaron Donald, whether it's Cooper cup, 
you know, they have a, a weekly, daily uh, rhythm that that makes them great, and they and they master that rhythm. And you know, Jalen Ramsey, they master that rhythm. Like you know, these these unique elite players, and you know, I always try to you know with the younger guys like hey like you know if you don't know what it looks like there's a couple people in that locker room that you can watch for a week and learn a lot from and now you have to ask them a question um so you know i think it's uh you know as as a young guy you want to be uh, seen not heard right so it's it's a lot of listening a lot of just uh um, you know figuring out what your rhythm is how you fit but um you know being seen not heard is as big as a young guy and there's a does football affairs include uh the legends as well in, into that scope yeah, it does. It does in the scope. So, um, you know, the 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 team that I have, uh, you know, we work with our legends group as well, and you know, I think that that's a unique aspect as well. You know, we got a bunch of gold jackets. We got a bunch of you know, unbelievable players that uh, have played for this team. You know, how are you uplifting them and uh, making sure that they stay in the fold and are an important part of what we are as a, a Rams fabric. So it's been pretty cool to uh, to uh, take on that piece and um, you know have the team really dominate that as well as they continue to work through that. So let's talk about it, man. The ring, man. You got it on right now? Come on. <laughs> Super Nada. 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 And so how is that, man? It's like you get it, like all the work, and then it's like, okay, re reload on to the next, man. Like the, talk to me about, you know, that, that you know, push to, to, to accomplish that feat. And then, like, you know, here we go. Time to reset, man. Man, the coolest thing about winning that is that, you know, as a, as an organization, as you know, your departments, as a, as a team, you align on these these couple three or four goals, right? And as you go through and check the boxes, collectively we did it together, and you checked all the boxes, and everybody came together, everybody was a part of it, and it's just this big celebration, uh, a finish line of, of being able to uh, you know hoist the the Vince Lombardi, and I think that it was a unique experience, um, but. I think it's one of those things when you, you want to be great, you know, when you when you taste it, you want to go back and put yourself to have another opportunity to do that down the road. And I think that's what I appreciate about our leadership is that we didn't we didn't revel in the success. Uh, you know, we celebrated the moment we lived it. But, you know, we're not we're, we're out of that phase. You know, we don't we don't we don't really talk about it. It's about what can we do to be better for this upcoming season? Because we're already in a new year. Right. We started OTAs. Um, we're, we're a new team. There's, there's people that are not here that were here last year. It's a new makeup. There'll be, there'll be a new way of finding ways to win because of the new makeup of the team, new coaches, you know, right? Like turnover is real. Attrition is real. So like you have to continue to evolve. And I, I think it's one of the coolest part about, uh, you know, working within this organization is watch how the evolution of this team has evolved from year to year. And I'm, um, you know, very excited to see, you know, what that looks like for this season as well. So during the halftime show, man, of the Super Bowl, were, were, were we making adjustments or we, we, where were we at during the halftime show? Halftime show? Oh yeah, I you know what? I did not, I did not get to partake. Uh, uh, <laughs> I heard it was, I heard it was pretty good though. Uh, yeah, it was definitely off the chain. I was, I was in the house. <laughs> man, man, I, was, I was in the house uh, enjoying that part of the part of the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, I heard, I heard, I heard my guys killed it. So that that's. It's always good for the culture, right? You know, it was the, right. it was it was a good day for the culture, and that's 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 a win right there. Now that's a win, big win, man. One question I want to ask you, man, just in, in your journey, and and you know, I think you started off with your shoot your shot of being curious. On um, what led you to really want to focus on getting that, uh, getting your MBA, and kind of like your continuing education. Um, you yep. just finished, uh, you just finished something at Brown, right? Did yeah, you yeah just finished my MBA at Brown. Um, congratulations, man. That's you know I mean, yeah, oh, that's hard. Appreciate that, man. Um, you know, I think for me, right, the uh, the thought process behind that, right, is there's still a a, con a connotation around what um, ex athletes can do in this league, what um, you know, people that look like us can be in this league, and you know, I think to do more, to to want more, you have to do more, um, and I think to 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 show that you want to um, you know be someone within that pipeline that continues to climb, you have to do the work that shows that you're deserving of it. And so I'm always seeking new information, right? I always want to put my best foot forward. I always want to be my best self. And, um, you know, the stars kind of align with this program um, to be able to um, be able to do it while doing work, you know, with some some long hours and some hard times. But, you know, what, I, what I'm very appreciative of that experience is like, you know, I've always lived in the football world, right? Like even back to we talked about, you know, elementary, middle school, high school, like sports has been what has been my vehicle for success. 
um, being around these people that were in this cohort, uh, you had CEOs, uh, you had you had chief diversity officers, you had uh, financial analysts, you had all the different spectrums within different industries that brings you a different lens of what success looks like. And so for me, that was the most powerful thing is working through problem solving with people who think differently, right? Because I feel like at the end of the day, we live in a world where nobody's the same. And I feel like the, the, the most successful people have the EQ and the ability to work with a bunch of different personalities. And that was the hardest part about the degree was managing the different personalities because we may have a certain financial deliverable that I see one way that the other two people in my group may see another way. So how do we find a way to collaborate and get on the same page? And so it was a very unique experience because I was dealing with, um, you know, individuals that I may not deal with um, in, on the regular in, in my career. But it was a challenge that it was uh, very rewarding and enriching for me and taught me a lot about myself and how I need to attack some of the things that I'm doing to make sure that I'm being the best self I can be. So, you know, for me, my, my thought process was, you know, you want to, you want to continue to climb, like you need to make sure that you have, uh, you've done the things to, to make yourself representative and um, have those opportunities down the, down the road. So you, you played a little center, right? And doing your career. Yeah. So center guard, center guard. Yeah. So center is really the communicator of everything, right? So how much of that plays into your role today? Obviously that's, I'm sure it helps. Man, that's that's a great that's a great question. A question I, I rarely had, and I think that it plays a lot, right? Because as a center, um, you got to know what the safety rotation is, right? You got to know what the formation is, so you can set the point based upon where the slot or uh, the strength is, right? So I think that it gives you the view that you have to think of. Uh, you can't think in the vertical in that cylinder. You got to think about the umbrella, uh, and so I've kind of always this is something that I've always prided myself on is kind of trying to understand the big picture, uh, you know, know the whole umbrella. And so I definitely think that definitely is something that uh, helps me to this day in the way I think for sure. Appreciate the question. And remember the snap count after doing all that. <laughs> if, you're lucky, if you're lucky. Now you might have to ask the guard for that real quick. I uh, <laughs> love it. Um, so um, with education, I, I know there's been the buzz. Have you thought about continuing that next run? Because there's been a lot of buzz about that Harvard degree that they have going on in sports, man. Have you ever looked into that? And I know, I know you just graduated, but, you know, I'm just talking about yeah. setting goals going forward. Have you seen that or or is that even uh, an aspiration? Because I've seen the classes and they look interesting. I mean, kind of the same kind of experience, but just, you know, on a broader level and still kind of tack tackling challenges that's maybe more, you know, specified in, in, in what you do day to day. You know what? I would I would say this. I definitely think that down the road, uh, another degree or maybe even a PhD way, way, way down the road would be something I would consider. Um, and I and truly, I think just, you know, you think about the institution of Brown. Right. I just went to a, an Ivy League school, got an Ivy League education. It was started by slave owners. It was started Damn. by slave owners. We had a slavery class during the curriculum. Uh, mm -hmm. And I thought it was very tastefully had because they are leaning into their story and their faults. And so I say all that to say this, right? Like there's a lot of barriers of entry uh, to opportunities for people that look like you and I. And I think, you know, we need to lean in and make those barriers of entry uh, less less tough to uh, to climb, to get in front of. And, you know, education is one of those vehicles. Um, and it has been for me, um, you know, just the... Uh, the education, who who you meet during those educational opportunities, who you meet in those ecosystems, those quote unquote country clubs that can help propel you. Um, those are rooms that, you know, we weren't allowed in at one time. And so, you know, I don't take it lightly that, you know, having the opportunity to attend, the, to attend these institutions is something that just 50, 60 years ago wasn't allowed. Right. So um, it's uh, it's definitely something down the road that's possible um, and definitely something I definitely would think about. Absolutely. That's awesome. MH, you want to hit them with the quick hits? Yeah, so, Jock, these are just kind of some quick questions. First thing that come to mind, let the viewers know a little bit more about you. So, you live in the city of stars. Have you ever been starstruck? Ooh, that's a good one. Nah, not yet. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, yeah, actually, I got I got an opportunity to, to, uh, to sit courtside um, for a Lakers game. And LeBron, LeBron came up. Uh, he didn't talk to me, but he's talking to somebody beside me. 
<laughs> I was sitting next to Floyd Mayweather, and I was like, what is going on right now? I'm this country boy from Cleveland, Tennessee, chopping it up with Money Mayweather, and here's LeBron James. So, yeah, that, that moment right there was pretty like, oh, uh, I don't know if I belong in this space, but, hey, it's fun. <laughs> Have you ever – I mean, I know there's a lot of nicknames that go on in the locker room, so ones that are appropriate. Have, what, what was your nickname in the locker room? Ooh, what was my nickname? You know what? I didn't have many. I don't got. I don't got anything good. Shout out to one of your uh, favorite teammates. Favorite teammates. I don't want to get uh, you in trouble. My fault. Um, man, I've had some good ones. Uh, let's go back to the Tennessee days. You know, shout out to my guy, uh, uh, Montario Hardesty. Uh, he's a running backs coach in South Carolina right now. Um, unbelievable dude, doing great things. He's gonna be an unbelievable coach. Uh, in the football world for a long time, man. Proud to see him uh, doing what he's doing and eating uh, and doing so great. So I know it's the big boy. So well, give me give me your top three meals. I need I need to know the preparation. What what, what are we going to? I mean preparation. You know, I mean the whole a, thing. If it's a meal, you know, I mean number one, like the only the only way I get southern food out here is Chick Fil A. So you know, the spicy Chick Fil A got to go number one. I mean, that's the only thing I got in the South out here in Cali. Like, other than that, it's avocados and pressed juice, right? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, let's go to, uh, I mean, you can't go wrong with putting some some steak on the grill, right? Like, I go maybe grab a nice, nice filet, throw it on the, throw it on a smoker, you know, that's a, it, that's a quick prep, you know, just put a little like. What, what do you do, Salt Bay? Put are you, you serious with it? Yeah, there you, go. Um, you know, a nice little filet on the grill. Number three, uh, I mean, you can't go wrong with a good pizza. You know, uh, it's a, it's a Friday night. I'm with uh, I got my oldest daughter seven, uh, my middle daughter's four, my my youngest, my son is uh, is two. So you know, having a Friday night pizza night, watching a movie. Uh, big Cali vibes, watching it outside because it's cool out all year. And, you know, I think those are those are things I love to experience, man. Anything with the kids, anything with the kids. So uh, winning championships uh, as an executive or winning championships as, as a player, which one is more, I guess, rewarding? Well, as a player, I never won me. So – we, uh, no bowl games? No bowl games? No S no a bowl no. games and championship? I mean it's it's something. We, <laughs> we get we get us something hey. out back or something. Hey, I listen, mean, bowl games and <laughs> championship? UNLV hasn't been to a bowl game in a while, so I, we, we I can't sit that bar, guys. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that. Oh um, I would say, you know, if you win it as a player, I mean that has to be extra rewarding, right? Like knowing all the work and being the one that's actually in there fighting the battle and fighting the fight, making it happen. Uh, you know, coaches and executives are so dynamic of putting the pieces of the puzzle together to make sure that, uh, you know, all the right ingredients are there for success. But, you know, the players are the ones that are on the field really making the plays, making things happen. So I can't imagine um, having been in a position as a player to, 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 to do that as well. But I ain't going to like it like it wasn't fun winning as an executive as well. So it was fun, very fun. I don't know. My last one. You got a, uh, any quotable movies? Movie that you kind of quote the most? I mean, plenty, uh, <laughs> plenty. But you know, my all timer might be Coming to America. Hell yeah! <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm a big Coming to America. Anytime it's on, we're, we're watching it. You know, if the kids are asleep. But uh, Coming to America one. The first it's America, Jack. Now you say <laughs> there we go. There we go. You had it queued up. You knew what I was gonna say. I love it. I love uh it. so I have a uh I have one really quick, man. So uh somewhere along the line, you said you're a big uh uh low-key country music fan. So uh <laughs> so is that still you still got that in your rotation, man? You know what? You know what? Uh it's still in a rotation a little bit. It might be more like Tim McGraw Nelly uh, mix. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad but, you said that. So I was going to ask you, did you pick up? So Nelly's full country now. He dropped. Did he drop the country album? Are you picking up the new Heartland Nelly album? When did this drop? When I'm, am I that yeah, far I, out of the loop? When, it how, dropped last loop? week. Loop. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm gonna pick that up. We'll, we'll check it out. <laughs> 
big Nellyville guy. So I'll, I'll check out Nelly. There you go. Oh, my God. Absolutely. <laughs> and then one more before we kind of jump into the winner's circle is anything behind your number, man. You uh, kept the number 65. Um, was there anything around that number? How you? Because, you know, some people have stories and some it was like, yo, man, you know, that's that's the jersey I got when they when I signed up. So so in high school, it was just the only jersey that fit me because I was the only big boys. So it was the biggest size they had. So that's easy. <laughs> but to, I do have a cool story behind that. Um, you know, when I went to Tennessee, um, I committed. I really silently committed probably as a sophomore, but I kind of went in public as a junior. But, like, when I was a sophomore, like, Philip Fulmer goes, hey, if you come to Tennessee, because he wore 65 in Tennessee as well. Mm-hmm. If you come to Tennessee, I promise you to be here for you. And uh, sure enough, you know, yeah. when I when I signed, uh, you know, two, th- two to three years later, it was still there for me. So, you know, it's near and dear to my heart because, you know, you, you share that bond with your head coach who wore it as well. So that's pretty special for me being able to share that number with uh, somebody who's been, um, you know, unbelievable to me. Nah, you, you, really cold, it man. took some. It, it took the number off somebody's back, or he just let. No, nah, he, he kept it on ice for the boy. <laughs> <laughs> he kept it on ice for the boy. So uh, just, we got to walk on that. Yeah, they watch out. Give me that. Hey, hold on, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> this not you. <laughs> 64, 66. Those are your choices. Don't you don't you look at that. All right, man. So here we want to jump into the winner's circle, and I'm really excited for for this man and and and, and what you can share about this, and I'm going to just kind of really just. Uh, open it up talking about the black is black sports business symposium man. kind of give us what that is and then and, and why you created that and then we'll just kind of delve into it man because i'm really excited about that that's coming up so the black sports business business symposium is a, a unique opportunity for uh, minorities to come together to be uh you know empowered uplifted and educated uh on what roles in the sports world look like but more importantly to hear from the people who have climbed that ladder the hard way and also to network with them to procure opportunities. Um, you know, I think that, you know, we live in a world to where, you know, it's not what you can do or what your resume looks like. It's who, you know, and once again, that, that becomes some of the barriers of entry for, uh, for our people. And I, you know, the, the prowess and the, uh, you know, the, the vision behind this thing was to be able to get the right people in the room with the with the right individuals that need to procure opportunities and, and move the needle forward. Um, and so at the end of the day, that's what we want to do is that we want to provide opportunities to uh, uh, to black individuals and minorities that want to um, you know come into the sports world and may not have the um, access and visibility to meet the right people to get the opportunity they want. Um, you know, at the end of the day, that's the, that's the short of it. And I think it's going to be such a dynamic opportunity. Uh, to bring so many powerful people to the table, to have one uh, powerful conversations, uh, tough conversations, hard conversations on what it looks like to get into sports, but also, you know, what it's like to uh, climb the ladder and, you know, some of the things that um, they have seen this work for them and not work for them. And also we want to create uh, an opportunity for you to be able to see people over different verticals, right? Like, you know, is it, as an athlete, you're taught, okay, I want to work in sport. I'm, I'm coach. No, there are just so many different, you know, avenues within sports that you can work. It's just that maybe you're not taught about what all those different avenues are. So, you know, we want to be able to provide a wide range of opportunities so that um, individuals are able to see that there are so many opportunities outside of what you may know. Um, you know, you, you can be a data engineer, right? You can be a, you can, you can work for strategy and ticketing and, and, and be able to move the needle financially for a club. You can work in a marketing department and be able to show what the visibility of the brand and uh, exude whatever the messaging that that organization wants to talk about, right? You can be a scout um, and help build and help build a roster and be able to do all the background work to make sure we're procuring the right talent. Like you can be HR. Like there's so many. Like sport is just like a business. There's so many verticals within it. Um, but I feel like you know, our, you know, sometimes people aren't educated on, uh, you know, or, or expounded upon what are all those opportunities are. And we want to be that conduit of change, that conduit of opportunity, and that conduit of communication and networking. Uh, so, um, you know, they're, they're able to procure those opportunities. We can move this needle forward. I mean, that's huge, man. I remember the first time I, I saw a Raiders game in Oakland and away from just looking at who's playing and who's coaching, I was my mind was blown about how much everything was working together and all the different departments that were um, in the sport. So you're 100 percent right about that. We just got to be educated on that. I know it's been a, a, a process of, of getting it going, you know, through COVID and all that. So let's mm-hmm. talk about the start of it and. How's that planning uh, all worked out? I mean, you're talking about a two-year process, right? Like it was uh, something that's been baked and cooked uh, for, for a while. And to finally be at the inflection point of the actual event, uh, it seems like a long road. But also I think that it's 
it's helped us learn and evolve and, you know, find all the right partners and people to come on board and help along with it. Right. So, you know, just to get from point A to point Z, it's taken a lot of people, a lot of conversation. Um, and, and to be here now, it's almost surreal. And, uh, you know, we've got invitations that have been going out over the past two or three weeks. But, you know, it really started with a core group of people. Um, you know, as you can see, our whole board of advisors, if you head to the website. And, um, you know, I think that uh, those conversations were, uh, you know, somewhere where you turned, um, you know, passion to process, process to an event. Um, and I think that, you know, when you look over the two years to get to this point, I think you're very thankful and there's a lot of gratitude to all the individuals that have put in so much work on something that is not their full time job to make sure that this thing moved forward. And, uh, you know, that's the that's the type of people you want to be on the boat with uh, to be able to move this thing forward. The ones that are willing to do the, the hard work, get their get their hands dirty. Right. And, and collaborate so we can go ahead and move this needle forward. So I'm super excited about it. It's going to be uh, so dynamic and. You know, it's going to be a start of something great because this is not a, a one and done thing, right? This is something that how do we, you know, get this off the ground and then how do we continue to continue to make it bigger and better, right? You know, coming out coming out the gate with prime time as the uh, Let's as, the, as, as the as the lead speaker, and you know, we all know what he's done at Jackson State and the and the lens and visibility that he's brought to HBCUs and uplifted and empowered and really shown these kids and these other institutions that you can be successful there as well. And I think it's a powerful story to tell. Uh, and, and I'm glad that he's starting us off the right way. I think it's the most, uh, I think it's the right way for us to get this thing rolling. So super excited about that. Man, that's fantastic. Well, you, you talked about partners and I thought that, you know, seeing ESPN sign on um, to, to, to this is just kind of a really big statement, right? Because, you know, we get all, most of our news, like ESPN was the first, it revolute, like who wanted to see <laughs> news information 24 hours, right? And they changed the game. And because of ESPN, there's all these other, you know, sports shows and sports segments that are, are kind of happening. So what did it mean to not only have them sign on, but some of the other partners that we just probably don't know about that are working behind the scenes and may not get that ESPN kind of look and credit? You know what? I think it just shows that um, with, a, with a huge partner like ESPN coming on, it shows that that um, one, there is a gap in this opportunity and there's people that want to come in and be able to uh, hold the torch to be able to, to uh, let's light the path and uh, be able to lift this thing forward and move the needle. And I think that's what I'm super excited about is, right, is there there are people and organizations that are just as passionate about you are about being there to be a change agent. Uh, so we're thankful for ESPN for the partnership and, you know, some other partners that will announce as we continue to roll up and get going. But I think that's the most exciting part, right, is that, you know, people are wanting to, uh, you know, lift the torch with you. You know, rising tides lift all boats. And, you know, I think that uh, it's good to see other people want to be the tide as well. You see how he kind of smooth past that he ain't going to drop the bomb. He ain't going to give us the clue exclusive on the other other mm -hmm. partners he's going to announce, man. <laughs> no. no, sometimes you got to dodge it. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> Speaking of the like umbrella that you mentioned earlier, I think what's really unique about the symposium is, hey, it's, it's, it's college students, it's current players, it's former players, it's folks in sports business. It's it's a whole wash of everybody. So what was the, uh, I guess, the idea behind that and how important that was for you? You know, I, I think it's very important to uh, bring different people in different stages of their life because I think no different than when you ask me about my MBA, what is the most important thing? The most important thing is that these people network with each other as well, all right? So you want to create a, a, an atmosphere of people in different trajectories because also the magic is them getting to meet each other along with all the dynamic panelists and companies that will be on hand to uh, that'll look to, uh, you know, interview and provide, you know, opportunities to these people as well. So, you know, I think that you want to, you want to hit the whole spectrum, right? Because we want to see more people in the C-suite. We want to see more mid-career right. execs. And we also want to see entry-level candidates procuring those pipeline opportunities to continue to, to rise and grow uh, and be planted in, in as it as seeds and um, watered as well. So, you know, I think that you want to create the, an opportunity where you're, you're, you're really impacting the whole spectrum. And so I think that was when you think about when you're bringing all these dynamic people from different points in their careers and their trajectories, that's, that was the thought process. Man, that's fantastic. So can people still apply? And if people can't make it this year, what's the best way for them to like stay in tune? Um, you know, I just want those two questions I kind of have for you. Yeah, um, it definitely still apply. Head to the website. You know, all you got to do is go and request a web, uh, uh, request an invitation. Uh, we're still 
We got, I think we got one last round that's going to go out, and uh, we're almost we're almost there, almost at capacity. And we've had a uh, it's been crazy how many people have applied and uh, how many people we're going to have coming. So you know, I definitely think that follow us on social handles, uh, get on the website. Uh, black sports biz and um, you know i think it's a unique opportunity to really stay involved something that's going to be a a living breathing organism to be able to provide opportunity to people that look like you and i so it's going to be a a super i'm super excited and um you know it's going to be dynamic it's going to continue to grow uh, as we continue to build momentum Love it. so vent being in atlanta georgia juneteenth weekend man um uh, the significance energy. behind that, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about that. And is and is it, it going to stay in Atlanta? I know we, we 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 this is the start, but is it going to as a traveling thing or is Atlanta where it's gonna, where it's going to live? You know what? I think it's all about year one, making sure we're getting it off and, and and doing it right, and then figuring out you know what's what's for it after that. But like you know, it's definitely uh, in in the right city and at the right time of year, um, and it definitely was intentional. So super excited to to celebrate. Uh, black culture, the black experience, and uh, these dynamic candidates that are deserving of opportunities across the entire spectrum of sports. Love it. All right, is there what's next? Like, what is you know future? I mean, you know, it's definitely it's it's funny. I've been kind of really getting into living day to day, but like you know, it's still also good to have like you know what the ultimate goal is or what you're striving for, right? Um, do you see any kind of, you know, ex, uh, higher exec position or, or roles that you that you're that you'd like to see yourself in? Man, that's a great question. Um, I would say this, you know, people ask me this all the time. And, and what I would say is that you want something that's up and something that's aligned with your vision and values, because I am happy where I'm at right now. Right. Like I do have a unique opportunity where I've been given growth opportunities. We've had, you know, an, an unbelievable amount of sex success, but you had a uh, more importantly, an opportunity to be able to learn and grow with with uh, executives that have been able to pour into you. And I think as somebody who's young in the game still, right, that's the most important thing that you have mentorship of individuals that know what it looks like and you're learning how to do things the right way. So, you know, I think that whatever is next, whatever, you know, comes my way, you want to be able to say it's, it's up, but it's also aligned from a vision and values from a culture standpoint. Um, to be able to be something that you're aligned with, because at the end of the day, we spend more time with this job than we do with our own families. And so you want to make sure that people you're working with are people that you want to go to war with at all times, because, uh, you know, sports is a big sacrifice. It's fun. Um, but, you know, it is it is long hours. It is long days. And, um, you know, it is a, it is a 365 day a year job. Right. So, you know, I think that, you know, whatever that looks like, you just want to make sure that you're uh, on the right boat with the right people. I love it. All right, so this is a part of the show we like to call dropping coaching gems or the assist. So this is where you would kind of hit us. And you've been hitting us with one-liners, by the way, <laughs> today, and I love it. But uh, where you would hit us with, like, either, you know, words to live by, something you would tell your younger self, or just a, a, a quote or a mantra you have. Um, You know, something I would tell my younger self um, is that, dive into the relationships you know don't don't worry about networking uh you know people young guys, young people always ask me you know what do you think about networking do i need a card to be able to email people text people i said look nobody is going to speak on your behalf if they don't know you so get to know people and get to where you're building relationships because that's what's transformational so you know be transact be transformational versus being transactional um, also, I would tell my younger self, you know, it's one thing that I, you know, I always stand, I always want to live by going forward is like, you know, be a, be a, be a thermostat, not a thermometer. Uh, you know, a thermometer is, is, you know, when external things happen, external temperatures, it, it rises based upon that, but a thermostat, it can set the temperature of that room. Right. So like, you know, that's how I want to be viewed as somebody, you know, as a leader within an organization is that, you know, whatever needs to be injected at the time. Um, you know, I can read the room with an EQ and IQ to be able to bring what is needed at that point in time. Um, and also just something that, you know, uh, Coach McVay says it really has a, it really hits home with me and something that I'll live by as I continue to grow with this space is, you know, is that, uh, you know, we, we, he says we compete with our schemes, but we win with our people. Um, you know, and in, at the end of the day, like no, no great leader has done it by themselves. Um, they've had the right people in the right spots. Uh, whether it be players, whether it be coaches, whether it be scouts, GMs, presidents, whatever, it's been the collective. And so, you know, always remember that it's not just you that brings success. It's the people that you work with and the people that you can turn, continue to learn to get to grow and work with on a daily basis. So, you know, I definitely, I definitely, that'll be my ethos, uh, you know, as I continue to, uh, 
to, to, to grow within the space. No, I love it. MH, final thoughts? Yeah, I'm, I'm about to get my Fred Taylor on, man, and just <laughs> got to uh -oh. give you your, your, your flowers, man. Uh, you know, this is a success story that we don't hear a lot, right? You know, um, you've made it to what a whole lot of people's dream of is the NFL, and you're still a very young man, 34, 35, um, with a whole lot left to live in a, a probably a larger career in sports away from the field, man. And that's a success that, you know, it's not shared enough. So you're a big inspiration, man. Congratulations to what you're doing and uh, look forward to staying connected with you on, as your journey continues. Man, just to be able to spend time with people like y'all and have these conversations, man, that's what makes it worth it, man. Uh, you know, sports is just like everything. It's a relationship business. Uh, and it's not it's not the uh, it's not the journey. It's the people you meet along with it. So uh, thankful for your time and, and thankful for this opportunity to be with you all tonight. Absolutely. And is there anything that we left out or anything that you want to kind of close in? Because, I mean, you've done a lot of great, amazing stuff. Like we didn't even get into, you know, the uh, racial equity task force that you're involved right. in and right. things like that. I mean, you know, you got a couple of seconds. You want to speak anything on that and let people know where they can find more information on that or on, yeah. uh, on you or connect with you? Yeah, man. I mean, you know, hit me on LinkedIn. Um, you know, I'm very active. I really think it's all about, you know, networking and building those relationships, as we said earlier, and really getting to know people so you can, um, you know, figure out what's out there and uh, have people help you along the way. Like I've had a lot of help to get to where I'm at and I, I'm, I'm really out to help other individuals to be able to seek and find what they want to do because, um, you know, it takes it takes us all to, to, to uh, look behind us, uh, lift the lift the hand and uh, bring people along with us. So, you know, that's that's a passion point of mine. So feel free to reach out. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll be as active as I can and, and love to uh, meet and, uh, and, uh, and uh, grow with other people. So, you know, that's, that's very important to me. <laughs> Awesome. Well, we'll see you all in Atlanta. So make sure if you haven't, uh, make sure you get uh, get on there and uh, um, get your invitation. I um, want to thank our guests again, man. I appreciate you for jumping on, man. We want to thank you, the people, for listening, man. This is this is why we do it, you know. So I hope you enjoyed the show, uh, picked up some nuggets, and, and you know, found out a little more uh, inspiration. Our new shows drop every Thursday, so please, please subscribe to the show on YouTube because visual uh, representation it really matters all right so wherever you listen to podcasts you know subscribe there and please stay safe practice gratitude and know we're rooting for you screaming all us blacks got a sports and entertainment until we even assuming you're rooting for everybody that's black yeah uh-huh yeah assuming i'm rooting for everybody that's black yeah Yo, 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 shoot me, I'm rooting for everybody that's black, spat about to racks on handmade new rags. Shoot me, I'm rooting for everybody that's black, that's everybody from sports to college class to rap and battle.